What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So in this video, we are gonna be talking about one of my favorite SaaS companies, Software as a Service Stocks, which is a very, very high quality business. And uh, I've been meaning to buy this stock for a very long time, but it's only been the valuation that's been a little bit of a concern for a very long time. So we're gonna take a look at this business. They are gonna be reporting earnings next week. So we're gonna take a look at the earnings expectations, intrinsic value calculations, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, Everything is going to be covered in this video. As always, if you enjoy it, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're just joining us for the first time, I would really appreciate that. A link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board as a MoneyVest member uh, and you get access to all the 40 plus members only ad free content and videos, Excel spreadsheets, including intrinsic values, members only valuation spreadsheets, including S&P 500 and volatility spreadsheets, as well as a Discord access where you can find out exactly what I'm buying and selling. So trade alerts, trade ideas, everything is going to be included. Also do check out the fundamental technical analysis options and psychology course. We are going to be running a discount here very soon. Lifetime access to all of them and do connect with me on Instagram. My handle is going to be CassWRP. We'd love to have you on board over there as well. So the company we are talking about today is going to be none other than Adobe. And Adobe is, in my opinion, one of the best software as a service company trading at just a little bit over i think four or five hundred dollars right now so it is uh, at actually six hundred and ten dollars per share year to date the stock is up a whopping 79 almost 80 percent and it has seen a pretty significant rally over the last uh, several weeks as overall technology has recovered and has done really well so they are going to be reporting earnings on the 13th uh, that's probably the same day as the Fed's announcement of the interest rates, and they're going to be reporting after the markets close. $4.14 is going to be those EPS expectations with a little bit over $5 billion in revenue and 23 upgrades over the last 90 days for the company. So we know that Adobe's kind of broken down into a lot of different sort of core products and services that they have. So Creative Cloud gives anyone anywhere the most powerful tools to express their creativity. And this, of course, includes your Photoshop and Premiere Pro. There was a pretty big threat from DaVinci Resolve, which we talked about and addressed in one of our previous videos. But Adobe continues to do really well, growing customers, growing users, and growing revenue as well. Adobe Document Cloud. So these are all your PDFs and document management, e-sign, engaging and managing documents. And Adobe Experience Cloud gives digital businesses everything they need to design and deliver great customer experiences. And finally, Adobe Express as well. So a template very similar to Canva, web and mobile app empowers everyone to create standout content as well. So these are basically the core of what Adobe basically offers. And uh, you'll notice Adobe Creative Cloud, Document Cloud, Experience Cloud are the three main sort of services that this company offers. And 40% more Photoshop usage when cloud services are utilized, over 75% increase in Acrobat web monthly active users year over year, 17 trillion first party segment evaluations per day, less than 100 milliseconds response time for 99.5% of requests, five times Acrobat web conversion rate as compared to desktop funnel and 25% less churn among creative cloud customers using Adobe tools on multiple services. So one of the things that Adobe is really good at is that it's a sticky business, right? It's a very, very sticky SaaS business where um, consumers are going to be very much accustomed to how the company operates, how the products and services operate, and they're going to be very resistant into change, right? So DaVinci Resolve, even though it's one of the best you know, Premiere Pro, it's a, it's a comparable product to Premiere Pro and it's a lifetime fee where you get one one-time fee where you have lifetime access. Adobe is more like a recurring subscription, which I pay each month. I pay 50 bucks a month or a little bit over $50 a month to have access to almost all their services, including all the applications. I think they've got like over 50 applications when it comes to design and creativity and graphics and document cloud, including experience cloud as well. So uh, it's a subscription base, which is a very sticky business model and recurring, recurring business for the company as well. Now this right here are going to be some of the other um, performance wise, third quarter fiscal year 23 performance. We saw revenue growth of 10% to a little bit under 4.9 billion dollars and 13% growth on a constant currency basis, a little bit over $3 in GAAP EPS and $4 in non-GAAP EPS as well. And this right here is 2024 uh, total addressable market. So they are expecting $32 billion in total TAM for Document Cloud, over $63 billion for Creative Cloud and about $110 billion for Experience Cloud as well. So overall, they're expecting a market that's well over $200 billion. And of course, artificial intelligence kind of plugged into the overall business they are uh, doing really well with respect to in integrating artificial intelligence into their company as well. And uh, this right here, content explosion fueling the global economy, over 5 billion people with internet connections, 900 million global population of communicators, and over five times expected increase 
um, in demand for content over the next two years as well. So content is king. And over time, there's only going to be more and more content produced. And as a result, Adobe is going to be at the forefront of design, graphics, content, creation, everything. This right here are some of the acquisitions the company has made, major acquisitions. And again, Adobe is a pretty big business. So Frame.io, very, very big business. Workfront, we got Magento, we got Marquito, uh, we got Vitolia, we got Behance, we got Day Software, uh, Omniture Inc. A lot of these acquisitions that Adobe has made over the years to kind of strengthen their position and dominance in this market, which obviously has been reflected in the overall revenues and just the sheer momentum we have seen. I mean, take a look at the overall consistency for revenue growth from $4 billion to well over $18.8 .8 billion. And gross profit has gone from just under 3.5 to well over $16.6 .6 billion in a trailing 12 months. And operating income has gone from $450 million to well over $6.4 billion for the company. So everything's moving in the right direction. Very, very strong growth here for the company. Needless to say, it's a very, very well-run and well-managed business. This right here is going to be net income. So from 290 million to well over $5.1 billion on a trailing 12 month basis. Shares outstanding have gone down from 513 down to 460 million. That is also very good. And we've got earnings per share and EBITDA, everything moving in the right direction from 770 million to over 7 billion. It's a 10 X growth and earnings per share has gone from about 58 cents or 56 cents from a diluted basis to now well over $11 per share. And when it comes to margins, since it's a software business, We've got fantastic margins at over 87% gross margins, EBITDA margins at 37, 32%. We've got net income margins of 27%, free cash flow margins of 38. Uh, we got return on common equity, assets and capital also really, really strong at over 17, 20, 30%. For the business and net income per employee, so profit per employee, that has also gone from 177,000 to 175,000, which is slightly lower. So the company's efficiency-wise has slightly slightly gone down on a profit per employee basis uh, at the moment. Now this is where things get really interesting. Now this is the valuation piece which I mentioned earlier, and right now Adobe is trading at a 39 to 54 times earnings multiple on a non-gap and gap basis, respectively. And price to sales is trading at well over 14 and price to cash flow trading at a little bit over 34, 35 and enterprise value to EBITDA trading at 28 to 38 as well. So these are some um, really, really high multiples for a company that is not expected to grow at over 30 to 40 percent. So that is actually one of my only concerns with Adobe is the valuation piece. There's a lot of businesses out there that are fantastic, but the valuation is not the best. And our goal, as I mentioned on the channel, is to find great businesses trading at great prices. You can find great businesses trading at wrong prices and still not make money, even if they're great businesses, because you're overpaying for that business, right? Think of it this way, right? You could find the best car, the best home, the best phone in the world, but if you end up paying more than what it's worth, certainly you're not going to make money long term because you are overpaying from the beginning. So the margin for profit only goes down if we are buying something that is super expensive or super pricey or trading at much higher than what it's actually worth. So having a having a very good assessment of the intrinsic value is literally the starting point of investing because the price paid directly represents or directly correlates with how much money you make long term. If you overpay, you make less. If you underpay, you make more. It's that simple. And our goal is to, again, find great companies trading at great prices. And Adobe is a great company, but the pricing is debatable. Now, this right here is the balance sheet. Balance sheet's also really good. $7.5 billion of cash with a little over $4 billion of debt. So we've got a negative net debt of $3.4 billion with a very strong current and quick ratio and debt to free cash flow that's also under two. So balance sheet is a huge check mark. Uh, a plus for the company. And this is going to be the growth expectations going from just a little bit under $16 to over $46 per share. If you plug that, plug these numbers into our intrinsic value, or in other words, the growth expectations, the CAGR comes out at just over 12.6%. So a little under 13% is the growth rate for the company uh, over the next five years, what the analysts are expecting over the last next say, let's say 10 years is what the analysts are expecting. Trailing 12 month net income, 5121. So we plug that number in, 5121. 12% growth rate, let's assume for a 20 times P multiple, 10% uh, margin of safety, 12% discount rate, we're going to go with negative 1% share dilution, and we arrive at a fair value or an intrinsic value, which is significantly, significantly lower than where it's trading at the moment. Now, let me, let me just do this, right? Let, let's just go over uh, the sensitivity grid and take a look at where we are. So 450 is still not there yet. So let's just go ahead and put 14% and uh, 24 times price earnings multiple. 
Uh, let's see, we're still not there yet. The highest value we can get is 555. Let's go 16%. Uh, let's just do 18% here. Uh, and now we're looking at, okay, now we're at 650 and the price right now is at 610. Okay, perfect. So uh, this sensitivity grid basically shows us the different intrinsic values for Adobe based on different growth rates and P multiples. And right now, since the stock price is at $610, we are currently over here. So this is where we are in this right, uh, in this lowest column and this farthest row, except we're not at 34, we're at 32. So what this basically means that given today's pricing for Adobe sitting at $610 as of today, market expectations are that it's going to grow earnings at 26% while also giving it a price earnings multiple of 32 times. That's exactly what we looked at earlier. So we can see 39, 38 times is the earnings multiple. So 32 times earnings multiple with a 26% growth, $613 that's the intrinsic value as of today, which I believe is pricing in a lot of optimism for Adobe. Can it grow by 26% and demand a 32 times P multiple? Sure. In the realm of possibilities, it's still one of the many possibilities, but is it the most probable outcome? Probably not, right? So that's exactly what we're here to discuss is what is the most realistic, objective, and most probable outcome for any company out there. And for me, 26% growth with a 32 times price earnings multiple is a little bit pricing in for perfection. And I'd much rather go with somewhat lower numbers. Uh, I would even be comfortable, let's say 16% uh, growth rate, 20, 24 times being multiple, which gives obviously our fair value down to $304, which would mean that Adobe would need to drop at least, at least 50% and come down to this support level where it was trading prior to the rally that we have seen. Actually, much, much lower than this most likely closer to this previous resistance, uh, which is again at $383 per share for Adobe. Now, look, I know there's going to be some comments in, in, in the comment section, basically suggesting that, you know, there's another stock that that's trading at an overvalued level or trading at a level that's not worth buying right now. And look, guys, that's, that's the market, right? That's what we're here to discuss is because a lot of the times, not everything's going to be buyable, right? We have to be extremely picky in what we actually choose to invest in because it's your hard earned money, right? Not every stock, there's over you know, 8,000 stocks in the US alone, over 150,000 publicly listed companies in the world, right? So our job is to say more, say no more than we say yes. And the companies that we say yes to, we have to make sure that they are great companies and also we're getting a bargain, we're trading, you know, we're trading very quality stocks, we're getting a very good deal and we're buying them at undervalued levels. That's the whole idea. No doubt Adobe is a fantastic business, but is it worth $610 today per share? If you think it is, sure, be my guest, do what's best for you, right? That's what we're here to discuss. But for me, $610 just seems a little bit too much uh, given the growth expectations are not as high as you know 12 to 14% in earnings growth over the next five to 10 years. So hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to connect with me on Instagram. My handle is going to be CASWRP. Fundamental technical analysis, options course, psychology course, everything's going to be available with the lifetime access. Link's going to be down below. And also do check out the Patreon and the Discord link, members-only private videos, Excel spreadsheets, Discord access, trade alerts, trade ideas. Everything's going to be included with the link down below. As always, happy investing, and I will see you all in the next video.